Alright. We're live. And I'm just going to check a few things. Today we are looking at holiday photos I took over the last week or so while on a bit of a road trip with my partner. They're just random photos, I'm going to edit them up and sort of chat about each photo as I go. Just sort of exper experiment really, get away from the, the, the normal gaming thing today. So yeah, so me and my partner went away for four days, five days, four nights up in the Waikato region of New Zealand. And yeah, just, I like photography as a hobby. So I sent a whole bunch of photos and I just picked a random bunch of them to, to edit up live on stream and see how it goes. So we have this cool looking lizard dude who was at a, at a wildlife sanctuary in the Waikato region. It's a whole bunch, of, there's a bunch of photos from the wildlife sanctuary. Wildlife sanctuary is great for, for photography purposes because you can get quite close to things, but it's a little sad seeing the birds in the, the big cages. Uh, much better to, to capture them flying around free, but I don't really have the photography set up for that at the moment. I just don't have the reach on my lenses. Uh, you'll see an example of that later, later on in the photos. All right, just do a little bit of editing. Contrast. Push the exposure a little bit. That out. Standard stuff. I've got a lot of very bright areas in the background of this photo. So we might pull those highlights back a little bit. So they don't distract too much. And yeah. And the standard profile corrections or remove chromatic aberrations. And then we have a pretty good uh, what I wanted on one of this one. Pretty good before and after. A couple of a couple of minor changes and we get a lot more out of the photo. Which I like. Okay. So that's the scaly dude. Do I want to crop it at all? I don't think so. I think it's fine the way it is. And we'll move on to the next photo. This is of an oyster catcher. It's a very cool, colourful bird. And again, do the same sort of generic stuff. Like a little bit of tea haze, I bet it's in. Don't go nuts on it or it starts looking really weird, but a little bit is fine. And in this case, I probably do want to crop the image, I think. Maybe pull up this little bit of those shadows in the background as well. Uh, mainly, mainly highlights the chain fence if I do that, which I don't really 
want to pack this. All right. So we'll crop out some of this foreground and background. Put the bird's eye right on the intersection of the third lines. Not really a big fan of this bit of grass. Coming down here, it makes the edge of the frame a bit messy, but I could cry by cropping it the other way. It's a very heavy crop, though. Maybe a little bit more. Uh, no, we'll go this way. It's fine. I don't want to lose too much resolution. It's a big distortion with the the bokeh on the chain fence in the background. Oh, distracting at this at this crop. But I mean, there's not much I can do about that. Unfortunately, it just is what it is. At least we could do a lens blur thing. This is a new thing they've added, I haven't tried it yet. So, apply, analyzing. If we could blur the background a little more, we could remove that distracting bokeh sort of pattern of the fence. Maybe. We'll see. But that actually worked really well. That's much better. What happens if we push the blur amount all the way up to 100? Oh, that's a cool feature. You can blur out the, the fence in the background to the point it's almost not even there anymore. When I was shooting F5.6 at 180 millimeters, it's already had a fair bit of background blur anyway. I probably could have shot at something like F2.8 and got a similar effect in camera, I guess. But that is what it is. All right, I like that. The only problem with the AI stuff sometimes is that it, it uh, can distort. Well, not distort. You can screw it up, but it also it um it can slow down your computer a bit because it's sort of applying that in memory. I've noticed if I do any sort of HDR or big panos and stuff, then it's definitely dealing with bigger files and more stuff that's done to the file and it's just just can uh slightly editing down a fair bit which is fine but i'm doing it by myself but not something i really want when i'm doing it on stream so pretty good bit of contrast This is just standard stuff, I like, sort of my standard default uh, 
to making changes. Sometimes I'll change things around. I'll do black and white or something like that. But these are just the little changes I do to something to make it pop out, I guess. Oh, highlights. No, oh, more contrast looks bad. When you're photo editing, it can be quite easy to sort of just slowly adjust your way into something that looks a bit ridiculous sometimes. as much stuff at the top and bottom it's not really anything, anything of interest there and look at the details never really regretted upgrading the kit lens to, to something better um, my camera but you just like a nice lens just gets you so much more more detail more sharpness in the image so this little guy was in a walk in Avery he's very friendly we're not like hop on your hand friendly I've seen that in places but but doesn't mind you getting too close So that was cool. So another one, the walk in Avery. We're definitely going to want to lift the shadows on this one. Even more the bird. Oh, that's a cheeky looking. Cheeky, cheeky looking parrot. Giving us the side eye. So I'm just hanging out waiting for my food. What are you doing? I'm trying to like that. Behaves. Give me a little. And this feels wonky to me. Probably, probably wasn't, but just want to make that bar in the front more or less straight. But that feels a little better. I might even want to make it a little less weighted to that side. Probably should have got a slightly better angle when I shot this, but that's okay. And a Kia. For anyone that hasn't come across Kias before, they're a uh, New Zealand mountain parrot. Uh, they're incredibly intelligent and incredibly uh, problematic to gear and equipment if you're in Kia country. They can shred tents. They can wreck vehicles. They are they are cheeky little little parrots. Oh, they're not actually all that little, they're actually quite large. But they definitely... They're definitely very cool to watch. 
Just want to keep them away from his stuff. They have very cool colors in their coat. I feel like I'm very slightly misfocused on the shot. But... That's all right. Doesn't look too bad. But again, this boker in the background is very distracting. So we might try that AI tool again. See if we can fix that up. So yeah, give it a moment to do its thing. Do the visualize deep. That seems pretty good, right? Take that off at the moment. But yeah, the background is looking much nicer. Although... Here was looking a little bit more like it's been just sort of layered in to the image. Not quite as organically in there. If we can fix that a little, slow the blur amount. A little bit distracting in the background. So that uh, 30 by, let's see how we go. Yeah, okay, I'm happy with that, I guess. Might crop a little though. Check out some of these grasses. It's very orange, striking orange bit at the top here. Okay, here photo. Standard, standard adjustments. We've got this wire mesh in the background. Straighten that up a bit. Definitely want to raise those shadows up. Maybe focus a little bit more and on the bird.
And let's take out, let's see if we can use the blur picture again to take out that wire mesh effect in the background. Moment, do it swing. Might not use this too much because it's going to slow everything down. It's kind of cool to play with though. I think you can even change the bokeh type. That's pretty cool. Now that wire mesh effect is gone. Hold on a sec. What did it do to the foreground here? It removed the entire. Is it detecting everything that's in focus and using that as its default? Depth values. Because if we look at this, it's a lot of like foreground blur. Yeah, like the depth of field is is on this. Probably not exactly on the bird, but it's on like this this feeding tray, and so it's removed. It's blurred out this entire stand. Which looks weird. Yeah, so you can see that the stand down the bottom is just gone. How do we get that back? Can we get that back? We can sort of do that. All right. What's that look like now? Take off the. Okay. So you can blur in focus points. That works. So need to fix whatever's going on over here. Can we fix that? Cool. Okay. All right, so that's a tool we're going to have to be careful with. It's not really, uh, let me just reset to this. Yeah. No, I'm not on. All right. I'm getting this encoding overloaded message again.
So Lightroom is overloading things a little bit. It'll just be that Lightroom is lagging. Don't know if anyone's actually watching this. If you are and you're having problems with the stream, please let me know. I'll stop using the lens blur tool. I just like playing with new things, seeing how they work. All right. This is just the sunset. So dehaze works really nice with clouds and sunsets and stuff, but you don't want to push it too far or you end up with this terrible looking image. Why isn't it showing in the screen? No BS. Like, it should be showing in the middle of the screen. Oh. So you can sort of see what's happening in the top corner there of the picture. But it's not actually showing. It's not actually showing much in the, there should be right in the center of the screen right here it should be a big picture and it's, it's there for me but it's not there on my screen overlay for OBS maybe I need to do this as display capture. Uh, okay. So that's probably a bit better. Kill me for a moment. Lightroom not visible. Move display capture down. So we can see everything we need to. That looks better. All right. So as I was saying, contrast uh, dehaze wise, a little bit of dehaze, nice clouds. Too much dehaze, horrible clouds. So dehaze is a tool where a light touches is definitely uh, better. All right, we'll lift those shadows up a bit, a little bit more detail out of the foreground. There's a fair bit of noise in this foreground. Um, We'll darken this, the highlights in the sky a little. And then I, mean, I did promise I wouldn't use too much more AI stuff, AI bits and pieces. Um, There is a, there's this denoise tool that I've added recently, which is actually really good, but I'm not going to run it while on stream because it's going to grind everything to a halt. Um, you can sort of, but you can see all the noise in here, and I'm going to come back and remove that using this denoise tool later on. I'll just tidy it up a bit. So what was this? This was just a handheld shot at, yeah, F9 ISO 8000 in very fading light. The one 200th of a second. So it didn't capture a lot of light. 
it was just me snapping a shot as I got out of the car and went, oh yeah, those clouds look like they're pretty nice when we're coming back to our accommodation. So, so I probably should have double checked the camera settings a bit more before I snap that photo, but we can, we can fix it up a little. I'll do that later though. And this is a fence I found that's filled with boots. Got a little drive out the country to visit a couple of different places. Um, and I came across a boot fence. I've seen one of these before down in Wanganui, but I don't know. I don't really know what the purpose of these are. It's kind of cool when you're driving on the road and you just see a fence covered in old boots, though. I mean, It was a lot longer than what's shown here and went for a bit. Just, yeah. Boots all on. Old, old boots. So. Let's get the temperature sitting right. Too warm. Too cold. Probably there. Well, a bit of this grass at the bottom. Trees at the top, which aren't adding too much to the image. Come up a little this way. I'm just doing it for Facebook. I don't mind cropping it a fair bit. You do lose some resolution. But um, I'm shooting on a Sony. Uh, a7 IV, which has a 33 megapixel sensor, so it's got a little bit of resolution to play with. Still, see it's, it's pretty nice. And then I think I went on what may be one of the best short five minute walks in the country, which was to a place called Natural Bridge. It was completely flat. I only took five, six minutes to walk in here, and the scenery was amazing the entire way. And I handheld snapped these images using, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A setting on the camera that takes it at different exposures automatically. I wanted to try and get a slightly better dynamic range in it, so we're going to HDR this. Because when you're sort of under this big arch, which is this big limestone bridge across, across this chasm, you end up with a very large dynamic range. I'll try and like what's going on that colored area or that white area there, but we might be able to fix that. Um, I'm going to also have some leave movement up around the place, which we might be able to fix with uh, the ghost, the ghosting him out. Oh, sorry, I realized I was muted. All right, so we're merging this HDR. 
in my computer something to do. Sorry if you start hearing some background uh, noise from the computer. I got my mic filters set to try and uh, prevent that, but it only only does so much. And I'm hoping this isn't too jerky on the stream. Photo editing actually requires a fair bit out of your computer. So running the streaming software on top might be might be pushing it a little bit. But it's an experiment. See how it goes. I'll I'll watch the stream later. Let's see. Okay. So we've got this HDR edited image here. We're gonna take those highlights. Maybe even the whites down a bit. Um, maybe, I don't know. If that feels a little purpley to me when I'm looking at it. Don't know what you guys see, but it just feels a little bleary. Where was the on the simple? Oh, yeah, this one. I take down the saturation. The purples and magentas a little bit. How's that look now? Still overly bright, but at least it's not coming across as purple to me. Which is just it's gonna depend on my monitor. My monitor's not really um calibrated. Book correct color, I think. <laughs> I'm not that serious of a photographer. Um, okay. Where are we looking? What are we doing? Overall, I like the image. I'll texture a bit. Drop those highlights. You have a bit more control over this in like Photoshop because you can create adjustment layers and you can like slide the height all the way down and make another adjustment layer slide it all the way down again. Just keep stacking the changes. But this is acceptable. It's a bit of part of the image I'm not liking that much. So can we do an adjustment layer or something? The new gradient put down the top here perhaps something like that. And then bring down the highlights again. Does that look? Uh, 
this, but he looks horrible. Um, I think that might have made it worse, actually. Or at least it didn't make it any better. That doesn't really look all that great either. Look at the final details. Um, I'll come back to that later and see if I can fix it up. Somehow. But it's not gonna lag my stream out to the nth degree. We'll go through and make a quick uh, adjustments. Some of the stuff. Texture, case, All right. So this is again this walkway, um, natural bridge. Very nice, very nice short walk. Very recommended. And on the same road, there's a couple of different other places. There's this cave you can visit for free. Which I thought was pretty cool. It's called Peri Peri Cave. And it's a big waterfall. Maracopa. Maracopa Waterfall. Again. Uh, Uh, yeah, uh, it's quite an impressive waterfall. Um, the viewing platform has been washed out in recent flood. It still needs to be replaced. But aside from that, it's, it's it's a short walk and it's an amazing waterfall. So I wonder what that white bit was up there. Very, very cool spot. And then we stayed somewhere with a private garden. And this is, again, what I'm talking about when I say I'm not very, not very well set up for capturing birds in the wild. And this is as zoomed in as I could get. And it's not great. But I thought I'd have a play with this picture anyway. I don't want to crop it too much because the and we'll go there. And I might add a little bit of sharpening to it, maybe. Still not looking great though. Um, it's fine. So I shot this with a macro lens, Sigma Art 70mm macro. It's not full macro length, but you do get a lot of, uh, you can, good thing about the macro lens is you don't really get any focus uh, distance issues. Like I wouldn't be able to get this shot with my 180 lens just because I wouldn't be able to focus close enough. It wouldn't magnify this extent. So, Quite like the shot. The bee was reasonably focused and they moved pretty quick. So, a bit of contrast, a little bit of texture, a little bit of dehaze, a little bit of vibrance. And there, yeah, that'll do. Probably can have a run through and have a go over there. These images again later. 
a little bit. So we have, yeah, so while we were at this place, it rained, um, and then like the rain rolled away a little bit, and I was walking around taking photos of some of the water drops on the flowers and stuff, using the macro lens. So for, you know, that make for, for good, good photos. Those highlights now a little bit. Background. Yeah. Okay. And the same sort of thing again. I might just I'll do it here anyway. So I might just copy and paste some of those standard changes I like to make and go for a little quicker. Right. Again, like looking at the water droplets and stuff. It's not the best water droplet photo ever, but I mean, I like it. And there's a little pond with lily pads and stuff, it was pretty cool. I really kind of want to straighten this out a fair bit. There, maybe. Still feels a little wonky. Probably as close as I'm going to get it. Going through in the background, it's maybe a little harsh places around here, but I mean, it's not too bad. I took this photo, I didn't even notice this little spider up here. The water droplet walking around. There's some horses over the back fence, so I snapped a photo of them. Just a standard horse photo. There's this kind of cool reflection. I just want to crop this a little bit to. Cut out some of the mess at the side of the frames. I want to get this roughly in the middle. So probably there. Might drop some of those highlights a bit. Bright, bright areas tend to attract the eye. Um, and this is what I want to be the focus of the image, this reflection. Um, it's probably not the best image ever, but I thought it was kind of cool. So, yeah.
and another example of how I don't have, really have the reach for birds. Nice tilly in this tree, and that's the best photo I can get of it. Maybe if I blow up as a VTuber, I'll have the money to buy a, a nice long lens. Getting a high quality, long focus length lens is a little difficult though. Yeah, well, based on the usual changes, here we go. And we will drop in a bit. Bird. I want to get rid of some of this brighter stuff down the bottom as well. We'll put the bird on the roundabout on the bottom third. Third line. I tend to go relatively simple with my composition rules. I don't know if people viewing this image will even notice the Tui at first. But I also like the colours in the image and the and whatnot, so that's fine. And it also is kind of cool. Birdhouse. It was up high though, so it was hard to get a good angle on it. And that's the photos from my holiday. Random selection of photos. Anyway, I feel like my this is lagging my stream out, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kill the stream. I might come back on in like half an hour or so and just play some master draw or something like that. Um, this was sort of an experiment I wanted to try, and yeah, I'm not really sure if it if it worked very well or not. I'll have to review the stream later to find out. I suspect there was a bit of scuff and a little bit of, a bit of, it seems like it might be a bit laggy. All right, anyone that was watching, thank you for coming along and watching me edit up my photos. It's probably not the most exciting thing in the world. But I just felt like it was something I could turn into a, maybe a short little stream. Thanks again. Like I said, maybe back on half an hour or so playing Master Jewel or something along those lines. Cheers everyone.